G'day YouTube, Warbles on a lot here with the third of my movies in the YouTube Sculptors Guild series. This one's called Pipe Dreams. And I'm making this series for Amanda at Forever Wolf Films because she reckons there's not enough sculpture movies on YouTube, so maybe this can correct it. On with Pipe Dreams, eh? Okay, well it's called Pipe Dreams because I'm going to talk a little bit about the pipe that I smoke. It's a pipe that's made of iron bark, and I made this one about eight years, nine years ago. And you really only get seven years out of a pipe. So this one has had to be served with nickel coated high resistance copper wire. This is possibly not the cleverest thing from a chemical standpoint, but it stops the stem from splitting. It's also had to have a uh, epoxy patch put on the end of it because slowly the abrasion from its ramrod, seen in place here and used after every bowl to clear the tar from the stem, the abrasion from the end of the ramrod had slightly shortened the stem length and uh, eventually it poked out the end. But I pride myself in making one piece pipes where the two holes meet in the middle and you normally don't have to have any plug or patch or contrivance at the end. And so it's fairly critical that the length of the ramrod equals the length of the stem. And as you can see I've put a lot of work into my design to make sure that the pipe will actually hang on the thumb, feel comfortable in the hand and uh, yeah, it's a pretty functional little pipe, you know. And uh, mine's iron bark. The one my daughter smokes is yellow box. And it may not be absolutely the smoothest smoke in the world, but um, it's better than sharing somebody else's pipe and catching whatever coughs and coals they've got. And it means you can never run out of cigarette papers. And uh, if ever you feel the need to throw it away, it hides on the ground and becomes a stick quite readily. Which is sometimes a necessary thing for a pipe to have to do. Anyway, I'm going to pause this and we'll toddle up to the workshop and I'll show you how they're made. Okay, well... I start with a piece of chainsaw milled quarter cut timber. You can see the chainsaw tooth marks running parallel. Can't be done with a circular saw. And uh, to get that out of that, well, part one, that's the orientation that the pipe would be in the block of wood. And the idea is to have the grain of the wood going down along the grain where the stem's going to be. Here is a previously cut blank which when I tried to drill the initial hole down the stem I made a mess of it and the drill came out however it's quite a handy little size so I use a blank like that and then using a felt tip pen I mark around the template and get the outline of what the pipe should be the blank as I call it I then use a electric jigsaw, 250 watt, to cut around the uh, felt tip pen line on the wood and the jigsaw runs off the batteries in the pyramid through the inverter and it's fed power by the solar panels over there. So even though I do use a little bit of electricity in making the pipes, at least it's solar electricity. So having cut one of these, the next trick is to get the hole down the centre. And for that, I use my father's British manufactured lay tool hand drill with a 12 inch bit, 1 8 inch diameter. And I put liquid paper marks onto the drill shank to tell me where I've got to stop. The blank goes into the vise, 
to hold it vertically upright, I usually actually mark X and Y axis marks across the end to help lining up the drill. And you just keep going until you do one where you don't have the drill come out the edge. After that, you spend a lot of time very carefully drawing lines with a ruler along the extended center line of the drill to figure out precisely where the drill hole goes in the blank. But long before you get to that stage, you find that the little hand drill, which was great for centering the drill and getting the pilot hole started, it hasn't got enough grunt to deal with the drag all the way down the big long hole. So we get our two-speed heavy-duty hand drill, and that's what you drill the rest of the hole with. I have tried drilling in the uh, horizontal plane axis, but it doesn't ever work. You've really got to stand there with your hands out in front of your face working a hand drill. If you try and use an electric drill, you just haven't got the fine control and you'll go off course and you'll come out through the side and you'll wind up with yet another template. So the real difficulty is getting the hole from the top of the blank to go down there and match the hole from the stem. Once you get those two holes to meet so that you can blow air through them that's fine. All you have to do then is put the blank in the vise and use a collection of ancestral woodworking files. These are all actually come to me from my father and his father before him. And the grandfather was a wheelwright and woodsman at a coach builder's before he took the business over and graduated to being a blacksmith. So yeah, you just use these to take away everything that does not look right. And uh, it's not really that hard. Like I said, once you get those two holes drilled, then just keep going until you get a pipe that's got a pleasing line and it feels good in the hand. And I generally do variations on this theme. As you can see by the, the most serious I ever got was when I got two, four, six, seven pipes all ready to be varnished at once because at that stage I was varnishing them. I don't actually varnish them anymore. Um, I just let the oil from the sweat on the palm of the hand do the final polish on the pipe. And as it discolours from the tar coming through, well, golly gosh, isn't it good that it's not inside your throat? That's the longest I've made. I've made two of those foot-long pipes. They're actually um, a bit of a pain in the ass. They fall out of your pocket and they're easy to, to break. So, yeah, that's uh, the warbles on a lot method of making a hardwood pipe that should last for seven years in normal use. After you've uh, got the outside looking pretty good then you just enlarge the pilot hole to become the bowl. I generally use a pocket knife. Ideally the same pocket knife that I'm going to use to scrape the bowl out so that you can always rebore it and return it to its original profile. Quite restful to smoke an iron bark pipe and uh, not quite dream the day away, but uh, yeah, pipe dreams are fun. So that's how to sculpt a pipe, Amanda. Hope you like it. Ciao.